actually got behind a semi and next thing you know, I'm trying to stop, beep the horn, tell him to stop. A Tennessee trucker is dead after a police officer shot him in Berrien County's St. Joseph Township. Now that reaction was from a neighbor who witnessed the start of a series of events leading up to that shooting. <laughs> What's poppin' M2T? It's your boy Run on the channel to be. Don't forget to hit that like, comment, share, and subscribe button whenever you pull up to the channel. And while you at it, hit that post notification button for your boy so whenever I drop, you can hop up in the truck and roll with me. See what's poppin'. What's good, fam? How is everybody doing on this Friday? Hey, y'all already know, TGI, mother trucking out. <laughs> hey, man, we done made it through another week. Thank God it's Friday. It's time to get home to the fam, sit back, relax, kick up your feet, eat some chili, some neck bone, cornbread or something, you hear me? These hot dogs is killing your boy, man. <laughs> Hey, prayers goes out to all of my M2T fam. Y'all already know how we do it. Keep you guys in my prayers. So get home safely and enjoy your weekends, guys. All right. Y'all already know today we have our M2T honors. We have to honor the MVT for the week. So let's go on and get to it. Our first honorary goes to Ronald Harvey, a native of Hardington, Ohio. On September the 7th, around 10.30 a.m., Trucker Harvey was at a truck stop in Kenley, North Carolina, when he saw a young woman who seemed to be crying and it was in distress. He approached her and asked her, was she okay? When she responded, no. He asked her, when was the last time she ate? Because it seemed like she was a little, a little on the scrawny side. And she told him in three days. So it had been three days since this young woman had ate. Trucker Harvey bought her a meal set her down and then talked to her in which he found out that she was a victim of human trafficking and had been kicked out of a truck and left at the truck stop with no food, no money, no nothing. Trucker Harvey allowed her to call her family and to let them know that she was safe. He assured her that he was going to see that she make it home back to her family safely and soundly. He bought her a phone, he bought her a bus ticket, and made sure she got on the bus to head back home to her family. Trucker Harvey was asked, what was it that made him do as much as he did for this young lady? And Trucker Harvey responded, just do the right thing. It's in my repertoire to do the right thing. And we wanna let you know, Trucker Harvey, you definitely did the right thing on that day. Our second honorary goes to Rodney Clay, a native of Riverview, Florida. On March 2024, around 1.30 p.m., Trucker Clay was traveling on Interstate 435 in Lawrence, Kansas, when he saw an accident happen right before his very eyes. Trucker Clay literally saw and observed a car flipping in the air and landing. He ran up to the vehicle after parking his truck in the middle of the interstate, pushed to the side the airbags, afraid of what it was he was about to see when he saw two women in the car. The driver was bleeding from the mouth. A young lady in the passenger seat said that she could not feel her hip. Trucker Clay knew that he couldn't get, get the women out of the car by himself, so he ran into the middle of the interstate where he saw another trucker approaching, ran up to the trucker and asked for his help. The trucker helped Trucker Clay get the women out of the car and which Trucker Clay told the other trucker, I'm afraid that this car is about to blow, it's leaking fluid. They removed the women out of the car. One of the young ladies asked because she called her dad and used Trucker Clay phone. He allowed her to use his phone, but there was no response from her dad. Paramedics arrived, got the women out to the hospital and got them the help that they needed. Later on, the dad called Trucker Clay and wanted to give him thanks and wish him well for helping his family out out of that situation. Trucker Clay and Trucker Harvey 
You guys are what we call over here at M2T, MVTs, most valuable truckers. And we want to thank you guys for representing the trucking community very well and helping those pedestrians out in a time of need when they need it. That's what trucking and being a trucker is all about. Kudos. I appreciate you guys. Salute, truckers. Salute. We'll be right back with the stories after these messages and a few words from our partners. What's up, M2T fam? Merch is available now. We have styles for the men and the ladies. Visit our catalog and check out our inventory. What you waiting for? Go to MarriedToTrucking.store. Vicious scammers are constantly seeking and lurking to steal your identity from the internet. Our partners Aura specializes in protecting your social security number, passwords, and email by sending you an alert in real time when your information is compromised. So click on the link in the description box below and go to Aura.com slash Married to Trucking to sign up for a free, yes free, 14 day trial. Trust me, you won't regret it. Hey Run, now back to the story. When truckers cross paths with the law enforcement, it is vital that we keep it professional and we keep our integrity intact and our dignity and most definitely respect to these law enforcement officers. Some officers can give us a hard time. We all know that truckers. Some of them will give you a hard time. But a lot of the times, a lot of the officers, when you give them respect, they give you respect. Whatever it is that they put us over for or to do, whether it's citate or whether it's a, a inspection, they get it out the way, it goes smoothly, and we go on about our day and go on to go drop off or pick up our loads. Well, one time in Oklahoma, when a trooper pulled over a trucker for a simple no license plate citation, things went real bad very quickly. Check this out. The September 2023 traffic stop near the Stroud Toll Plaza started out peacefully. An OHP report shows trooper Caleb Swicky pulled over 28-year-old Alejandro Faldua for not having a license plate displayed on the front bumper. Along with the report, newly released dash cam video shows Faldua being taken back to the trooper's patrol car. In the video, you can hear the trooper questioning the driver. All oh, right, only two violations, just no CDO, which is not a service, and then no record duty status for not having a logbook, especially not having no CDO and checking and driving it. The trooper then begins to question where he's headed. Did you say you're going to get a trailer? Yeah, it's also okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going to get a trailer in Tulsa, but you don't know where you're going to get it. That's kind of odd. The lack of answers leads to more questions. Is there anything up there in that truck that there shouldn't be? No, sir. No, is there any marijuana? No. Any cocaine? No, sir. Meth? No. Any large amounts of money? No. No. The trooper then asks if he can search the truck. Because I think you've got something up there that shouldn't be. Faudua tells him no. The situation escalating as Faldua tries to make a run for it. Man, hey, sit tight. Get on the ground! I will teach you to get in that truck! Faldua doesn't stop and climbs into the truck. Get back! The struggle continues, during which an OAP report states Faldua reached towards a side door pocket. Keep your hands in there! Hands in there! Hands in there! Seconds later, Faldua apparently gets behind the wheel and the truck begins rolling forward a few feet. Shortly after, you hear Faldua screaming, then the sound of deadly gunfire. No! 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 Alejandro's family members were told cocaine was found inside the cap of the truck after the shooting. They also say they were told no weapons was found. We want to send our condolences to the Fuido Ramirez family for their loss. We want you guys to know that our prayers and our thoughts are with you guys. Man, I sure hate that that had to happen to that truck like that, you know. We can avoid a whole lot of things, truckers, with just keeping it cool and doing what it is that the laws, that the troopers and, uh, and law enforcement asked of us. We can avoid a whole lot of things, which brings us to our story for today. April 8, 2024, in St. Joseph Township, Michigan. Around 10.30 at night, Michigan Police Department got a welfare call 
to go and check on a trucker inside of a truck at a park. Once they arrive, things turn bad very, very quickly. Check this out. You know, he just struck a car down at the park and next thing you know, he full speed ahead right into a house. It's crazy. And breaking this morning, a Tennessee trucker is dead after a police officer shot him in Berrien County's St. Joseph Township. Now, that reaction was from a neighbor who witnessed the start of a series of events leading up to that shooting. State police handling the investigation tell us a St. Joseph Township officer tried to stop that truck near a small park across from Riverview Park last night. The truck then crashed into a squad car and left the scene on Riverbend Avenue. As it was leaving, the truck slammed into a home on Riverbend before the truck got out and ran. The St. Joseph Township officer caught the suspect about a half mile away. State police say the two started fighting, leading to that gunshot. The suspect, identified as a 42-year-old man from Tennessee, was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. The witness you heard from claimed that that semi-truck was traveling around 60 miles per hour when it crashed into the house. We want to send our condolences to that 42-year-old 42, 42 Tennessee truck driver his family to let them know that our prayers and our thoughts are with you guys. I mean, like we just said, M2T, I mean, a lot of things can be avoided when it, we professional drivers, we already know that we're going to deal with law enforcement at some point and at some time. Like, I mean, it comes with it. It's not what it is you go through, it's how you handle what it is that you go through. CBS News did a report that's a little more descriptive about what happened on that day. And we already know how we do it. We like to get to it and break it down and see what it is that, the, that it is that the uh, news broadcaster didn't report. So here it is. Boom. Y'all see that? All right. The driver of a semi-trailer truck rammed a police vehicle in southwestern Michigan, crashed it into a home, tried to flee, and was fatally shot by an officer. St. Joseph Township officers responded to a request Monday evening to check on the welfare of the 42-year-old uh, driver from Tennessee, who then drove his truck into a police vehicle. Mmm state police said in a social media post the truck when was driven a short distance before crashing into a home police said the driver tried to run and then got into an altercation with an officer who shot him the truck driver later died at a hospital his name was not released the officer suffered minor injuries and has been placed on administrative leave while the shooting is investigated. St. Joseph Township is about 85 miles southwest of Grand Rapids. There it is, M2T. There it is. A minor welfare check just to see what's going on. And this was the results. I mean, he, he, he went into them first of all. What was you doing? What was he doing to make him want to ram that police car? They just simply come in and knock on the door to see what's going on. They got a call to check on it. Normal procedures for officers. They do welfare checks all the time. Once they knocked on his door to check on him and he saw them, what made him put that car in drive and hit these people car? Allegedly. This is just my opinion. And let me make sure that we do notate that. Anything I say from this point on is allegedly. What made him do that? And then after he hit him, I mean, they, they really could have opened fire on him then because now you've used your truck as a daily weapon. And he, he burns out and he shoot down the street. Go a little ways down and then he boom hit these people house.
The house that was hit is on the curb of Riverbend Road. The homeowners planted trees in the yard to stop vehicles if they were unable to make the curve. But the trees were cut down a little over a year ago after being struck by lightning. The stumps remain in the front yard and help to slow the truck heading toward their house, potentially saving the homeowners' lives. A few inches more or without that stump, and this could be a very different story. I am extremely thankful to God. Like I pray every day for them, but I'm so thankful that those prayers, like they were answered because my mother was that uh, window right there in that corner. That's where she uh, has her desk and she was sitting there when that happened. Barely missed that, missed where her mom was sitting. And I can only imagine these is probably elderly people. Ran into these folks' house, acting a damn fool, running from these laws. A lot of us make situations very bad for ourselves, man. You know, and, and this 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 trucker was 42 years old, so he knew better. Like a whole lot of us out here acting a damn fool do. You know better, man. So now her mom, the day house is towed up. Who gonna pay for that? And now his family, you know, is in mourning, you know, because, you know, of his actions, you know, and, and the family who has he hit, thank God them did nothing that that truck did not hit anybody in that house. So truckers, y'all tell me, get in them comments, hit that like button. What is it that we can do to keep ourselves out of these messed up situations get in the comments and let me know you know earn shopping's earn you know I, I i may not i may i may need a little knowledge you know from my community whenever i cross paths with law enforcement i panic i get nervous you know this is not me you know particularly i'm speaking in general for my brothers for my community for my sisters i've crossed paths with law enforcement quite often and um, I mean, just recently, I crossed I crossed paths with a law enforcement. I'm talking about not even a week ago. Uh, I'm doing about seven to ten miles over the speed limit, getting on the highway, and uh, I seen him come from off the median and get behind me. You know, before he can <laughs> before he can even hit his lights, I pulled though. <laughs> you wrong, Ron. You know you was doing a few miles over getting on that on that highway, which I didn't even I I, I, I really thought I was good because I ain't know how fast the speed limit was really until I got on the highway. Long story short, though, I went ahead and pulled over a young trooper, you know, in Ohio, walked up on me, you know, you was doing a few miles over, you know, I'm not gonna give you no ticket. I just want to do a level three, make sure your paperwork, make sure everything. Yes, sir. When he approached the door, how you doing, officer? I already know we ain't got to explain to me what information you need. <laughs> he said, we was on the highway, he said, just follow me to the side of the street, then you know I'll let you know. Got I got told me everything he needed, gave him my paperwork. He came back, he, he did his level three. You know, he, he found everything was good. You know, gave me my license back, gave me a, a level three inspection paper, and sent me on my way. Thank you, officer, I appreciate you. You know, matter of fact, I even told him about M2T. <laughs> I told him about Mary the Truck. Go to Mary the Truck and check it out. We welcome law enforcement. We don't discriminate. <laughs> and he told me he was going to come over and check us out. You got to, you have to treat these, you know, these, these, the enforcement, these troopers with, uh, they got a job to do just like we do. And they go do their job. They also trying to get back home to their families just like we is. You know, if y'all didn't had any kind of altercations with enforcement, whether good or bad, get in the comments and let me know. Get in the comments and, 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 and let your boy know, you know, how y'all handled that situation. Because your situation and how you handled it can help help another one of us. You know, it can help the next driver, especially the young ones that's coming into into the uh, industry. So don't be discouraged, you know. When you when you when you do reckless behavior, reckless things happen. Sometimes it's minor, sometimes it's major, sometimes it's deadly. You know, so 
Get in them comments. Let me know. I appreciate you guys, M2T. Shout out to my subscribers. Shout out to all the M2T subscribers. Shout out to the fam. I, hey, man, I appreciate y'all, man. I appreciate y'all pulling up and tuning in and hopping in the truck. To the guests, I appreciate y'all pulling up, tuning in, and hopping into the truck. Don't forget, before y'all leave this, before y'all hop out the truck today, hit that like button. Hit the share button. Share this video. And leave your comments, all right? Man, I, I appreciate y'all. Another thing, M2T, go and get your Aura 14-day free trial. Protect your identity at any cost. It's getting worse by the day. Don't leave your identity unprotected on this social media and on this internet. Protect yourselves. All right, M2T, y'all already know. Until next time, it's your boy.